Ever wonder why so many modern videos have that nostalgic, cinematic look from like a pastime? I wanted to take a deeper look into the world of film emulation and that kind of got me thinking. Maybe some of you guys would like to know more about it as well. So film emulation is a digital process that replicates the look and feel of classic film stock in like a digital format. It's achieved through software, plugins, or filters that, you know, kind of mimic the qualities of analog films such as grain, color, balance, contrast, you name it. One of the plugins that's widely used today to recreate that look is from a company called Dehancer. Dehancer was born in 2014 and was developed with over 30 plus years of analog experience. So, so you know it's the real deal. Now I would love to get into the whole backstory about this company because, you know, it was truly interesting and definitely worth the read. But I think you guys came here for the actual plugin itself. So let's get into it. I'll, uh, I'll add the story somewhere down below if you, you know, if that's something that you want to check out. Okay, so the good thing about this plugin is, you know, it basically works with any video editing software you can think of. I mean, from DaVinci Resolve, uh, Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, even Lightroom. I, they have a mobile app. I mean, it's, they have an app for the iPad, the iPhone. I mean, if that's your thing, you like editing on the go, they have it. This thing is seriously powerful and I mean, it can emulate up to 60 plus different film profiles from black and white, Kodak, Fuji. Uh, there was a few others that were listed. I mean, you would think something like this would be a difficult time consuming process. Or I mean, at least that's what I would think. I work on indie film sets and uh, you know, I remember a conversation with the director one time about how things, <laughs> how things used to be and how you know, they used to be developed. And I was honestly shocked. He was talking about film and how they used to work with rolls and like cut and stitch frames together. You know, how things would end up on the cutting room floor. I mean, I don't know. That's what I think about when it comes to, you know, traditional film. Now, don't get me wrong. The science behind how, you know, they make the film emulation work is super complex. But, you know, this plugin makes it so easy to alter your footage. It's really a no brainer. All right, so let's get back to the house and pull up DaVinci so I can show you how this plugin works. Okay, so Dehancer basically helps to manipulate your image to give it more of those, you know, film-like qualities. Of course, you can edit and alter the color of your footage, but, you know, the main features of the plugin are gonna be film stock, grain, halation, and bloom. Now, the first seven or eight tabs are dedicated to color and film stock. These tabs are to mimic the look of certain film profiles like Kodak or Fuji. As you can see, there are a ton of different profiles to choose from to give your footage, you know, that unique look that you're after. You can adjust the compression, contrast, shadows, highlights, or even just pick a profile that suits you. Now where Dehancer really shines is adjusting film grain, bloom, and halation. Film grain is probably one of, if not the most recognizable aspects of analog film, adding texture and depth to any image. Now, smaller grain can give, you know, a subtle refined texture while larger grain can add a gritty, more stylized look. Just depends what you're after. You can choose which profile you want to apply anywhere from eight to 65 millimeter with varying ISO levels, you know, while having the ability to adjust the intensity with the slider. Halation is a slight halo effect that happens around, you know, typically the brightest part of an image. It's most noticeable around areas of intense brightness, uh, you know, such as sunlight, car headlights, reflections. It typically, you know, it'll add warmth and uh, some atmosphere to your image, making digital footage feel more organic and less, you know, clinical. Again, depending on the look you're after, you can adjust the sliders and profiles to, you know, what suits your taste best. Now, bloom refers to the soft glowing effect that occurs around bright areas or light sources in an image, essentially creating this like dreamy, hazy quality. This effect becomes noticeable more so around like highlights, creating a gentle diffused glow that, you know, can soften the edges or, you know, add warmth as well. This can happen naturally with certain types of lenses or filters, especially with, you know, older or lower quality lenses that, 
let light kind of scatter within the optics. Uh, there's a whole science to it. This look is often recreated, uh, you know, on purpose by using diffusion filters, soft focus lenses, or in post-production with, you know, digital effects. Both effects simulate how light, you know, spills in traditional film cameras, helping to add depth and realism, you know, making the footage feel more organic and less clinical, like I said, but they are not the same. So don't get them confused. If you really want to draw the viewer's eyes to something of importance, you can even create it like a vignette. You can adjust the size, color, and contrast all within a few clicks to really dial it in further. Adjusting the color on the fly with various sliders is simple to use, but you know, it, it really comes down to a science in my opinion. Coloring footage is definitely something that you, you really need to practice and fine tune over time. And speaking of coloring footage, you should check out their Colorist Awards for 2024. The Hanser Colorist Awards is a worldwide competition for color enthusiasts. You can participate with a submission in several categories varying from short films and documentaries to music videos and commercials. There are several submission dates running at the 2025 with prizes ranging from moment lenses, Nanlite Pavo tubes, all, all the way up to Atomos monitors and $5,000 cash prizes. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'll leave a link down in the description for you to check it out. Now, to be completely honest with you, I don't want to pretend to, you know, be a, be a know-it-all. There are a few different tabs within this plugin that I am just not aware of. Film Breath, Gate, Weave, and Overscan, to name a few of them. But, you know, you can do all of those with this plugin. That said, I look forward to learning more about them and, you know, how I can utilize them in my footage further. I mean, I was completely blown away by how many things you can achieve with, uh, you know, with utilizing this for your footage. It works if you want to get down to the nitty gritty and fine tune every aspect of your clip, or if you want to just have one click apply with custom LUTs to save, you know, you can totally do that too. So really anybody can use this pro video editor or not. The answer is a complex software with sophisticated algorithms. So having better than average hardware to run it smoothly is generally recommended. I mean, that said, my PC that I've been running it on, I would I would probably say it's middle of the road, maybe. It has an i7-8700K. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, and I think the GPU is a 1070 Ti, if um, I'm not mistaken. Wait, I mean, that's kind of starting to show its age depending on what I'm doing, but I, I really haven't had any issues yet. All right, look, I know there are a few different film emulation plugins besides Dehancer, I think like Filmbox and Film Convert um, and a few others, but none of them, as far as I can tell, have as a robust of a selection of, you know, different profiles to choose from. While Filmbox offers more of, you know, a limited selection of film profiles, it excels in creating an authentic film look that, you know, many of us find satisfying. On the other hand, Dehancer offers a vast library of film profiles and its sophisticated approach to grain emulation and halation produces results that, you know, just seem more true to life to me. When it comes to pricing, Filmbox is more expensive, but it offers a, you know, perpetual license option, while Dehancer has more affordable one-time purchase options. Ultimately, the choice between these two will depend on, you know, personal preference, specific project needs and budget, I mean, you really can't go wrong with either of them, but in my opinion, the answer is the one. I'm going to have a link down below in the description and on screen somewhere for, you know, 10% off if you want to check out the answer for yourself, which, I mean, I may be biased, but I, I totally think you should. If you do decide to, you know, see what it is and how it can help you up the quality of your footage and give it that unique look, let me know down below. If you have any questions regarding the software, drop those down there too, and, you know, I'll do my best to answer them. Now, if you enjoyed this video, it really helps out the channel if you could give it a thumbs up and drop a follow. Again, if you want to check out the Hansa for yourself, use code BLACKWOLF10 at checkout for 10% off your subscription. And thank you to the Hansa for making this video possible, and I'll see you in the next one.